Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can use 6x6 paper for the latest sheet load of cards September 2021. I hope you'll stick around and see how I'm going to do this. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. When I shared the September 2021 sheet load of cards, I mentioned a couple times how this sketch is a good one to help you use up your 6x6 paper or your 12x12. And I said I would be back to show you how to do that, and here I am. Now, before we go any further, I know that my paper was originally 6x8, but can you believe it? I only had one fall paper pad that was close to 6x6. So I did go ahead and pre-cut down some of those pieces to the size that if you use your 6x6 paper, you'll be all ready to go. If you haven't yet downloaded the September 2021 sheet load of cards, I will have the debut video where I tell you how you can download that if you're a subscriber to my channel and the process video where I show you how I made that first set using 12x12 paper in the description box below. The supplies for the 6x6 cards will change just a little bit. Originally, you yield 8 cards from the sheet load of cards, and if you want to yield the same amount, you would want to get out 8 pieces of 6x6 pattern paper. I went ahead and chose 7. I'm going to show you how to make 3 different cards with paired up papers, and then I'm gonna show you how to make one card using a single double-sided paper where the front and the back go together nicely. Another thing that will change is the amount of cardstock you'll need. Now today, for my sentiment pieces and the mats, I'm gonna be trying to use up some scraps. So I got out some colored cardstock that went with the papers, and then I'll be using some craft and off-white cardstock as well and you'll cut as many pieces of cardstock for card bases that you need. Once I start the process, I will go to a voiceover, and as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Before I get to that process, I do have a special channel member shout out. I recently had a channel member upgrade to paper trimmer level, so I would like to say thank you and welcome to Valerie Niver. Thank you so much, Valerie. I am glad that you're enjoying channel membership and wanted to upgrade. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. Piece A, B, and C, the heights all together add up to 6 inches and that is what makes this a good sketch for 6x6 six six paper. Once you have your 6x6 six six papers chosen, you'll cut them so they're 4 and a quarter inches wide and that scrap that is left over, you'll see how I use that later on. Then you're going to rotate that piece and cut a piece that is 1 inch, 2 inch, and 3 inches tall. And the for the first one, I just use the one inch mark to the left of my cut line. And for the remaining cut, I kind of centered it between the two and the three in case my one inch cut was off at all. I continued to cut all of the papers in the same way. And I did make sure to match up the papers that went together ahead of time. Once I had the pair cut, I then matched up each paper that would go on the final card. Just because these are mix and match, if you have a specific pattern you want together, you'll want to go ahead and just take care of that now. Now for that final piece of paper that was double sided that I wanted to pair up, the cutting is basically the same. You're going to make the same cuts, but instead of having to mix and match them with another matching paper, these will just get flipped around and used together for the end card. 
For the two pieces that make up the image and or sentiment area, I will be using some scraps today. For my sentiment piece, I'm going to use off-white cardstock, and I usually keep my cardstock scraps in these little photo holders. For like white and off-white, I will use a 5x7, and for color families, like I do Roy G. Biv, I have 4x6. This just keeps them easy to bring onto my work area when I need a specific color. But to cut these down, I just found some pieces that were at least two inches wide, and I cut those down to the final size on the instructions, which was two by two and a half. And I just cut until I had seven of those. For the mats that go behind these sentiment pieces, I chose three different colors for my Gina K design scraps. And you'll notice these are larger and that's just because I don't cut these down. I just keep them with the original eight and a half by 11 cardstock. But I cut them into strips that were the same two inches wide. And then I cut them until I had seven pieces that were two and five eighths inches tall. And I just kind of mix and match how many I made from each colored cardstock. For the final card stock, I am using some scraps again, and for each card I'll need two strips that are four and a quarter inches wide by one inch tall. So I just take my craft card stock and I cut down until I actually have 12 pieces. The remaining one I'm going to show you that if you want to cut it four and a quarter by three and a quarter that you won't have to match up those strips later. Next, I brought in my little photo trimmer and I'm going to pair up an off-white cardstock with one of the color cardstocks and cut the angle in the bottom. Now this will be important for me to keep these together so that the angles do match. Now if you're a channel member, don't forget I have the free cut files for you to cut these on one of your electronic cutters and you can find those links in our community tab. But it is super easy to cut these by hand as well. While I work on cutting the angles into the rest of those pairs, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Today's question is in honor of you already have seen me use two different kinds of cutters today. So I would like to know which kind of paper cutter do you prefer? Do you prefer a rotary or a paper trimmer, kind of like I have already shown, or do you prefer a guillotine type trimmer like I show here? Let me know in that comment section below, and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered the question and would like me to see it. For myself, I definitely prefer a paper trimmer and one that has a rotary blade. I just always think those last longer. I have actually not had a guillotine trimmer very long. I bought this little one probably a couple years ago. After all those pieces had the angles in them, it was time to stamp the sentiments, which I will be using this Thank You My Friend stamp from Bow Bunny, and I chose Gina K Designs inks that match the cardstock that will be matting the off-white sentiment. I set my stamp up in the upper right so that I would have a right angle to fit into the corner of my Misty, and once that was centered where I liked it and it was straight across. I then inked it up and stamped it with the different inks. Now originally I'm like oh that first stamp didn't stamp too well so I'm like let me stamp it again. Well it took me about three pieces to realize that that was just how the stamp was supposed to be. That is what the printed piece on the stamp set does. It's just a little distressed. So I stamped and cleaned off my stamp between inks until I had all seven pieces with the sentiment. I thought that these would be good for cards to go out to channel members. Before moving on, I did go ahead and adhere each of the pairs together. That way I didn't have to worry so much anymore about keeping the pieces together that have the same angles. Then everything was ready, so it was time to get the cards put together. Off camera, I made my top fold card bases out of off-white cardstock. And now putting the cards together is going to be the same as in the original video, so I won't go over that too much. I do have that process video linked below. But one of the differences is, in the original video, I did more of a mass production line. 
but this time I'm going to need to do one card at a time so I make sure not to mix up any of the parts that go with a certain card. So I would take out one little card kit and put together a card completely. This first card that I'm going to put together does use the mat that goes completely behind piece B, which is four and a quarter by three and a quarter. I'm just going to show you the difference. This way you don't have to adhere on two different pieces, but you'll see that after I put together the second card here in just a minute, that they basically just look the same. The first one just saves a little bit of cardstock, but if you don't want to mess with those two pieces, you can always do this larger piece like on this card. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and put the sentiment on yet because I want to have a look at my cards later after the pattern papers are put on the front and decide which backer I want to go with which card. But again, I just continue to put those cards together. You'll see here the two cards side by side. The one on the left has the larger piece of craft cardstock and the one on the right has the two strips. I finished putting the rest of the cards together off camera and once I had done that I took a couple minutes and I paired up sentiments with card bases. Once I thought I had some good pairs I then adhered the sentiments down and these did just get adhered flat to the front of the card. I wanted to keep these as thin as possible for mailing. Finally, I wanted to use up some of the scraps from cutting down the front pieces, so I brought back in my little photo trimmer, cut a couple strips for the inside of each card, and I made some angles at the bottom before placing them on the inside. Now you'll notice that once I had one placed, I did cut a little extra off the top of the second, but I just think this adds some nice color inside and helps use up those scraps. And that is how you can use 6x6 paper with the September 2021 sheet load of cards. If you enjoyed seeing me put together today's cards, I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up. Until my next one, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.